Okay, Aries, let's go. Let's see what's going on. Well, okay. Well, we have the Wheel of Fortune, which means the karmic wheels of fortune are turning in your favor, dear Aries. It, it is turning. <laughs> Stick in there. Stay in there. Things are happening for you. Now, interesting, this is a Major Arcana card. It's the 10th one of the Major Arcana. The angels, the you know, everything is there for you to enjoy life, to be happy, to feel like you're moving along as you always do with force and validation. And I don't mean force in a bad way, just feeling your passion. I use my pen here. Then we have beside it the five of cups. So, you know, this is kind of like the uh, crying over spilt milk card looking back at things, looking back at, you know, the Who Done Me Wrong song. Um, it, you know, it's not good for us to do that, right? Because this person's focused on these three particular cups that are spilt and the the wine or whatever has flowed out of them, where he has two cups behind, which means that be grateful for what you do have, the blessings that you do have in your life, the love that you do have, whoever is in your life that supports you. It may be one person, it may be 10, and it may not be exactly who you want, but you know what? Apparently there's a reason for that, as always, a divine reason for what's going on that seems turbulent, but Maybe it's for your best interest, and it usually is. So, you know, it might also be, too, that you're looking at when the wheels of karmic fortune were, were in your favor. It might be, you know what? It might be to focus on that time. Focus on when things were going great for you. How did that feel? What were you doing right? What were you doing uh, that you're not doing now? Or how might you change what you were doing when things were were in going in your favor? You know, we have to reinvent ourselves every so often. We can't just figure that the same path is going to give the same results. And and if we stay on the same path, it might. But um, if we want different results, we have to do things differently, right? So it might also be that. So just kind of ask yourself these questions and see what comes up for you, Aries. And remember, this is a general reading. So watch your rising and or moon signs. Well, here we have the star card. So we have really two great major arcana cards. Then we have this eight of swords. Was this in your last reading? I think if I remember correctly, and I said earlier that it possibly could have been. Okay, well, let's start with the star card. You know, the astrological omens are there for you. Your angels, your guides, your... This this is about going deep, you know, and looking at what is working for you and what has and being open to blessings. And then you have the the tied up eight feeling and it's she's not really tied up is she it's just her thinking is not clear she's not seeing the entire picture if she took off this bandana and her arms were free there's this beautiful castle on this cliff so there is prominence for you it's an interesting word to come up for this card uh there is availability there is abundance for you you just have to take off some of this, and it might be letting go of these emotional setbacks that you've had. I'm not trying to preach to you. You know that, Aries. I love you. It's just, I'm just saying what the cards are telling me. Um, letting go of those so that you can start to see the clearer picture, because I have a feeling that the universe is working in your favor. The Your angels and guides, the astrological you know, stars, omens are in your favor. You may be saying, well, nope, Saturn is in my yada yada, my eighth house. Okay, it may or it may not. I'm just saying that that all in all, there is a nice foundation for you all to be able to work with. Once you let go of the 
negative feelings and once you get clearer. Okay, let's look at, before we look at the transition card, let's look at the, ah, oh, nice. Okay, so this was the, the last card that came out. It wanted to come out with the, the this one, the eight of, uh, eight of Swords. This is the Ace of Wands. The Ace of Wands is about birth, birth of a project, uh, birth of a baby, blessings of birth. I feel like the universe is wanting to give you some blessings because, well, obviously here, but around your work, around your passion, what you love to do in life. This represents a fire sign. So there you go. Right? Ace of Wands. Maybe you'll get your passion back. You start to feel it. You get more clear or you get a great idea. And that idea is what helps you move forward. Interesting. Let's look at the clarification or the, excuse me, the transition card from one month to the next. Da, 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 from February to March. You know, that's interesting because I, I was going to talk about this sword card and then the queen of swords come up, came up. So this could be an air sign, Libra, Sag, uh, Sag, Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini, sun, moon, or rising. You know, this person looks like she's offering a helping hand. She's making some decisions. For some of you, this air sign is very beneficial. For some of you, you're going to say, nope, this has been the problem in my life. Uh, okay, so if this person has been a problem for you, I feel like that they are giving you divine um, guidance. In other words, it may not seem like they're in, in your favor, in your court, in your corner. <laughs> but I think that all in all, the experiences and lessons that you have with this person are going to make your life more uh, distinct and distinguished. I'm hearing those two, two words. And if they are in your court, so be it. But I'm getting that whatever they have to offer you in the long run is going to be in your best and highest interest. Okay, Aries. So we have two major arcanas. We have some feelings and, and thinking that's a little bit off, but then we have the birth and we have this, this person. So leave in the comments below again, if you all will, and uh, let me know how things are progressing and resonating with you. I want to look into my crystal and see what comes up for Aries. This is for mid February to mid March for Aries. Yep. This is a this is an upside down um, visual, <laughs> and the reason I know that I can tell it's upside down is because it's um, it's like the ground is on top. So yeah, for some of you, things have been a little topsy turvy to say the least. Uh, within this visual as well, I'm getting a woman. The, I guess the archetype would be a woman who is dressed in a white draping um, cloth or gown, she feels more like she's there to give you advice or to support you or be angelic for you. So again, pay attention to your intuition. Pay attention to your um, the quiet time, what you're getting it during your quiet time. Who Who's feeding you, how you're getting your information. Uh, the... <laughs> the totem animal for you all, Aries, for this particular month is a road runner. Beep, beep. Um, so I kind of like that for you all. So you may want to look up road runner and uh, see the meaning. My thinking is a, a speedy, you know, I'm thinking of the cartoon a long time ago, right? Um, or maybe you've seen a road runner. Look up the meaning, though. So feeling like you're ready to uh, get on the fast track again. Um, you know, you're ready to move forward, ready to go. Maybe not everything is aligned and in order, but you're starting to feel, I had that for a few other signs. You're ready to take that deep breath and start seeing the lightness, the load drop off. 
however that looks for you. Okay, anything else for Aries? Anything else that's of value to Aries? Well, uh, any of you all that have a vista or a beautiful ocean view or you live near the sea or the bay or the beach, um, and, and maybe that's part of starting to take that deep breath. You're just kind of getting that feeling of, whew, um, yeah, because this is a, a beautiful, I wish I could take a picture of it and show you. This is like the uh, the sun not going down all the way, but it's starting to go behind the the clouds when you're when you're looking out on an ocean view and it's starting to go behind the clouds it just has that beautiful serene feeling of that was a nice day that was a um calm day a calm day that's what we're looking for is calm okay my friends i'm going to add up the cards and we have 10 15 16 16 and 17 is what 33 33, 33, and 8 is 41, 42. 42 is 6. And 6 is about, um, you know, sometimes it's about abundance. It can be. It's about loving yourself. When I do numerology and I look at people's birth names and there's no 6s, which would be um, P's, Let's see what else would be a six. There's three letters that are that are sixes. When there's no sixes in their name, then they need to come into this life and love yourself. So just saying it's responsibility towards you, responsibility towards others. It can be abundant. If you're one that manifests easily, well, the six is in your favor. So you you may say, Well, I I've never really particularly cared for that number, but you know, maybe you'll pay attention to it more. And the six in the tra in the traditional tarot is the lover's card. Interesting. So partnership, bonding, love, marriage, soulmates, deep, deep lasting friendships. So when this card comes up is in a reading, it's a concept. It's how to look to see how others fit into your life. And six, by the way, too, is about relationships. Uh how you deal with other people, how you deal with community, how you deal with your people at work, um, relationships, again. This can show up as an event. It can. This this card of um, of this can show up as an event, something that you are attending, and it's a social event. 